So I was looking through the Charmwood collection, which is a collection of manuscripts all bound together in a series of volumes uh, from the estate of Dorothea Lady Charnwood, um, who was an autograph collector. So I was looking through these, this collection, uh, looking for a document for my PhD. When I chanced across um, this uh, manuscript uh, with a really intriguing title, it was called Last of the Octopods, and I thought, how, how strange. Um, it really intrigued me, so I started to, to read more, um, and it was a really hilarious um, comic poem. And I turned the page to continue reading, and I saw the signature at the end of this poem, and it was by Edward Lear, uh, the famous nonsense poet. Um, and I was incredibly excited um, to see this. From Monte Generoso, when the leaves were turning brown, 500,000 octopods all painfully came down, and on the back of every one a pufflicop held fast, and all their faces, dark or fair, with sorrow were o'ercast. I uh, did a search on the internet to see if I could find out anything more about it. Couldn't see anything about it anywhere else, um, so that's the moment really when I thought, wow, I think I might have found something really exciting here. So Edward Lear sent them to Mary Teresa Mundella, the daughter of the liberal politician Anthony Mundella, who he'd met whilst in Italy. And uh, Mary Teresa Mundella's niece was Dorothea Benson, who married Lord Charmwood and became Lady Charmwood. So that's how they passed into the Charmwood collection and then into the British Library's collections. So the first was the Lays of the Octopods or Last of the Octopods poem. Uh, which is a really comic kind of tale about these octopods and pofflicops, um, these nonsense creatures who go up Monte Generoso and kind of have this big adventure, come down the mountain, and there's elephants and ducks and all these nonsense creatures, um, and they all end up by jumping in a big grave at the end. And it's quite dark, quite humorous, comical, and very, very Edward Lear. For months ago, 8,000 babes had greedily partaken of red raw beef and brandy buff with curried owls and bacon. And, said the doctor's octopod, there can't be any question that all these little innocents have died of indigestion. The second unpublished piece is a small, um, small manuscript which has a, a limerick on it, very Lear again, typical Lear, with a double rhyme at the beginning and end about um, an old man on a bicycle with an icicle on the end of his nose, as you do, <laughs> um, which, is, which is very, very comical. And it's got a lovely caricature um, illustration accompanying it as well, which, which thrilled me to see, because it's very typically Leah. There was an old man on a bicycle whose nose was adorned with an icicle, but they said, if you stop, it will certainly drop and abolish both you and your bicycle. And the third unpublished piece is a letter from Edward Lear to uh, Mandela, Mary Mandela, um, and that contains a self caricature of Lear. Um, and he's this is this is you know quite rare um, to find one that hasn't been published before. And he's got a swollen foot, so it's a, an image of Lear lying on his back. He's very rotund, um, typically Lear with his big bushy beard, um, and he's got a really large swollen foot with stars around it and he's put swollen foot next to it so we all know uh, that that's what's happened to him. I would like people to start reading them and know about them and them to hopefully be included in future collections and um, be studied a lot more. I'd also like them um, to be made widely available for children to read I think because that's um, I guess that's who Leah kind of appeals to the most. I think we all read The Owl and the Pussycat and his other poems when we were younger. So I think that would be really nice for them to be widely available for children to read. And as the Lombards filled the chasm, they clashed their spades and said, of octopods and pofflicops, of ducks alive or dead, of elephants with tusks and trunks and skins all brown and rough, of all these things the Lombards sang, thank heaven we've had enough.